Hello, and welcome to another episode of Levy's Customs. I'm your host, Nathan, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to get media onto your Plex server. Now, real quick, the AC has been out at my apartment uh, for over two weeks now, so I've been dealing with that, and it's very hot in here. It's above 80 degrees Fahrenheit right now inside the apartment. Uh, so if you see me sweating or anything, just know that it is very hot in here and uh, that I need to go ahead and, and do this video. <laughs> Today I'll be going over basics like getting your media onto your server, prepping your media, and then organizing your files so that Plex will pick it up. I may go over certain aspects in more detail, but for the most part this is just going to be very basic and I will be going over other things uh, in more depth later. All right, so first is getting the media onto your server, and there are a few different ways you can do that. I personally mainly get my media physically, and some of it I get digitally. For TV shows and movies, I usually buy physical copies, uh, Blu-ray or uh, DVD, because not everything is on Blu-ray, unfortunately. And then for music, I do physical, so CDs, and then I also will do uh, digital downloads from places like Bandcamp or Amazon Music. If you're interested in the DVR function, I won't be going over that in this video, but I will in a, in a future video. I will start off by demonstrating how to get physical media onto your computer. And uh, if you already have your content in digital form, you can go ahead and skip this. For music CDs, I use a program called Extract Audio Copy. I like it because it's fairly simple, but it has advanced settings for those who want to get the most out of their rips. The big thing I like about this program is being able to get CD metadata from a database so that I don't have to fill everything out myself. It uses FreeDB, which no longer exists, but it's easy to connect other databases. I rip all my audio CDs into one megabit FLAC for my server, but EAC lets you customize codecs and bit rates to whatever you prefer. As far as organizing music, I personally have a main music folder, then an artist's folder for each artist, then in the artist folders, albums containing all the music for that album. As for DVDs and Blu-rays, I just want to go over this before we go into actually doing it, but technically ripping physical media that you already have, as long as you're not selling it or making a profit off of it, it is legal to do, at least here in the United States. But the kicker is that breaking the encryption on any of these media sources is illegal. So for me, it's kind of a gray area, but I feel like if it is my own media that, that I have purchased and I am not distributing it illegally, <laughs> then I feel like it's perfectly fine. So short answer is it's this is totally up to your own moral compass. All right, the program I use for DVDs and Blu-rays is called Make MKV, which while in beta is free to use. It's been in beta for a while, FYI, so it's you probably won't have to pay for it anytime soon. Just pop in your disk, decrypt it, and then choose which video files you want and begin the copying process. You can copy all the files on this list, but I usually just prefer to get exactly what I'm wanting so I don't have to mess with it later. With movies, it's usually the largest file. With TV shows, look for multiple large files with similar sizes. Alternatively, Make MKV will also show you the file's play duration to help you narrow down which files to copy. This next step can be skipped, but if you are storage conscious, then I would definitely look into this next process. I re-encode all of my media to a lower bitrate to save some space and then I uh, either keep it in H.264, uh, which is the most compatible video format currently, uh, but for 4K, I do H.265 because, well, we'll get to that here in a second. I won't be delving too much into uh, file types and encoders and whatnot, but I will be telling 
how or what I use and why. All right, so I totally forgot to put this in my script, but the program that I use for re-encoding all my uh, physical media rips is called Handbrake. It's free uh, and it's, uh, it's pr pretty easy to use and it's very flexible if you're wanting to tinker with a lot of video settings. So encoding in a highly compatible format will help reduce the amount of transcoding that your server will have to do if transcoding is needed, which is why I use H.264 or Advanced Video Codec, AVC for short. It's the most compatible video encoder out there, so it's pretty much guaranteed to play on any device. H.265 or High Efficiency Video Codec, uh, HEVC for short, is the next iteration of the MPEG codex, and it's up to 50% better at uh, encoding efficiency than H.264. This means at the same quality as H.264, you can have a smaller file, meaning you can fit more onto your server. And it means that uh, streaming, you can do it at a lower bitrate as well. There are two big drawbacks to H.265 though. The first thing is that it does take up more processing power than H.264 just because the compression is so much more complex. And secondly, because while it is gaining a lot of popularity, not all devices are capable of playing this codec. So while it is able to play it on a lot of them, especially new stuff. If you have something new, it'll probably be able to play it. But if you have some older devices, then uh, <laughs> your results may vary. After re-encoding, uh, you'll need to name, your, name and organize your files so that Plex can easily see what it is and pull the correct metadata for it. With movies, it's pretty easy, but with TV shows, it can be a bit difficult and time consuming. With movies, I have a main movie folder, then I have a folder for each movie, although sometimes I get lazy and just throw the movie in the main folder, uh, and then all the media for that movie, like behind the scenes and whatnot. For TV shows, Plex recommends naming episodes in the S01, E01 format, so the season followed by the episode, though you're more than welcome to add the name of the show before it. So you would have a folder named after the TV show in the folder where your server looks for TV shows. I usually have a folder for each season, but because of the naming format, it's not necessary. I just like to organize my files this way. For me, figuring out which episode is which can be a bit frustrating. A lot of times DVDs will have all the uh, the episodes in order, like on the file names, uh, how M uh, Make MKV shoots them out. Blu-rays, a lot of the times it's scrambled, so you know the first file may be episode six and the third file might be episode one, so it can be very frustrating to go through all of a TV show's content to figure out which episode is which. So usually what I do is I go to imdb.com and try to, and I kind of skim through an episode uh, with the subtitles on just to kind of see what they're talking about and if the subjects and stuff are uh, corresponding with the synopsis for that episode. And sometimes, if I'm lucky, I can even match up the little thumbnail that they have on that site to an exact frame <laughs> of the TV show. And if you're really lucky, the TV show will have the name of the episode somewhere in uh, the episode so that it's super easy to match up. Depending on how you have your server set up, which I will be going over server basics in a different episode, New content will automatically be scanned. I think it's by default every six or so hours. I also have it set up so that if Plex detects a change uh, in the file structure or something, it will do a partial scan on the new items. So usually it'll pick it up automatically. 
I usually like to manually scan to make sure that the file has been matched correctly. You can do this by clicking on the options menu for the library and then selecting scan library files. Sometimes the metadata agents get confused and may not show up right. An example being the movie The Wicker Man. There is the original and the remake with identical names and may show up as the wrong version. To fix these mistakes, click on the three dots on a video, select Fix Match. Here you can search for the correct version for Plex to get the metadata for. And so then hopefully you will have the correct metadata. Uh, that's one of the big things I love about Plex for the most part. Uh, you don't really have to put any information in. It auto, uh, get, it just gets everything for you, which is, which is really nice. And that's about it. Uh, again, just the basics. I will be going over more complicated issues in other videos, things like uh, a single movie being split across multiple discs or multiple episodes being in one file. Uh, so stick around for that. So what did you guys think? Uh, how do you guys import your media and get it going on your Plex server? Uh, is there anything uh, Plex related that you would like for me to discuss on a different video? Let me know down in the comments. I'm slowly adding more Plex content and how to's to my channel. So go ahead and subscribe if you're interested. I'd like to give a shout out to my first uh, Patreon subscriber. They just subscribed today. Uh, Mango L Candy. Uh, thank you so much uh, for supporting my channel. Uh, now I'm going to have to start doing some behind the scenes stuff uh, and some extra content for you and, and any of the future Patreon subscribers. And with that, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.